Hello everyone, let's look at this limit problem here. We have this x approach infinity and we want to see where um, what this function is approaching to, right? This function is ln x over the square root of x. And as you can see here, we usually are going to be dealing with uh, indeterminate forms. And so uh, for typical problems like this, we can use L'Hopital's rule to find the limit or to show that the limit does not exist. And so let's, uh, let's check the form first just in case, right? We cannot blindly apply L'Hopital's rule. So um, first, we are going to just look at uh, ln of some quantity and then also the square root of some quantity. And what is that? That's infinity that we are going to just plug in there. Um, infin infinity is not a number. Um, I'm just making it <clears throat> more symbolic here just to analyze the form. This is not formal work. This is more like scratch work. Okay, so ln of infinity. If you look at the graph for the ln function, the graph for the ln function is actually just this one. And so as you can see here, as x approaches infinity, then what happens? The function is actually getting larger and larger. Or actually, you can think of it this way. The function is actually getting higher and higher in the y direction. So you can see that it's, go it's going to be approaching infinity. Okay, so we have the top approaching infinity and the bottom, the bottom, as you can see here, that's a square root function. So that's actually having a similar shape as the ln function. So except, of course, at the, um, the number zero. And yeah, so this function is also approaching infinity when x is approaching infinity. So we get the indeterminate form. Okay, now when that happens, then we can apply L'Hopital's rule for this problem. So let's do that. So what happens is that we apply L'Hopital's rule the first time, and we are going to differentiate the top and the bottom separately. So what happens when we differentiate the ln of x? We are going to get one over x. So we are gonna get one over x as the numerator. And then what do we get at the bottom? We uh, we are going to get, um, let's look at this square root of x here when we differentiate. The square root of x can be written as x to the one over two. And so we can actually just use the power rule for differentiating this function here. So we are going to get what? We are going to bring down the one half to the front. So we are gonna get the one half and then of course the x, and then now the new exponent, the new power for the x, we're gonna take away one from this one half. So we are going to get like the one half. Okay, so now we have this function here. And it would not be a good idea to check the form by um, considering x approach infinity at this point because we should really simplify the function and see what's going on first before we consider the um, the form again before we plug in the infinity again. So it will be a good idea to do some simplifying here. Um, how do we simplify? We just <clears throat> need to use some basic algebra to move things around here. And so what we can do is that um, we can first turn this negative exponent into a positive exponent by moving this x to the negative one half to the top. So it becomes x to the positive one half. Yeah, so let's do that. Okay, so if we do that, then we are going to get the one over x is at the top. And then there is also a one over two at the bottom. Okay, so that one over two. Now this x to the one, like the one over two is being moved to the top. So it becomes what it becomes x to the positive one over two. Hmm. And we can actually do more work. So I'm, I think I'm going to need more space. So let me just move this one aside so that it doesn't get in the way, as you can see here, because we don't use it anymore. So now what happens is that we are going to um, continue to move things around, right? We can actually multiply the top and the bottom by two so that I can get rid of the one half right here. So multiply the top and the bottom by two. So what can we do here? We can do something like this, multiply 
the top and the bottom by two. So in this case, you are going to get um, the two. Actually, the denominator becomes a one, so we don't have a denominator anymore. So we are going to get the two times one over x times x to the one half. Okay, so there was still a fraction in here. So if you see that there was still a fraction in here, you can actually just put it as a, a single fraction again. So let's do that. Then we are going to get what? The two is actually on the side, right? So that means we assume it's in the numerator. And then the same thing uh, for the x to the 1 half. So this x is at the bottom. So now we are going to get 2x to the 1 half. And then you are going to get just, the, just that x at the bottom. OK, so that looks nice, right? That looks nice. And yeah, so if you plug in the infinity in here, you are still going to get what you are still going to get uh, infinity over infinity. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule here. Or we can simply just simplify the x to the 1 half and x to the, uh, when we don't put any number as an exponent, we assume that exponent is 1. Right? So we can actually use the, the quotient rule for the exponents to actually just subtract the, the 1 half and the 1. Right? So we can do that. So let's just use algebra here instead of applying L'Hopital's rule again. And so if we do that, then we are going to, we are going to get 2. Okay. Now combining the two x's together, then we just get x. And then now we have that exponent right there. Right? So we are going to get what? 1 over 2 minus 1. Okay. So what do we get right here? We are going to get 2x to the, um, what is that? That's negative 1 over 2. Now, if we don't want to deal with the um, negative exponent, we can actually we can actually move it to the bottom, take its reciprocal. Then we have 2 over x to the 1 half. And so, see what's going on here? Now, it's not an indeterminate form anymore. The reason for why it's not an indeterminate form is really because it's really because it's um, we have a finite number at the top. So the, the top is just 2. The bottom is approaching infinity. It's because the 1 half power is really just, just the square root for the x. So bottom is approaching infinity. The top is just two. And so as you can see the form for this thing, the form for this thing is actually two over infinity. And so we can actually draw a conclusion right now. When you take a finite number divided by a really big number, then what happens? You're, you're, you have your result that's approaching zero. So the answer will be zero in this case. And so as you can see here, that looks like a lot of steps for the problem, but actually the, the calculus step is really just at the beginning right here. It's to apply the L'Hopital's rule and also analyzing the form for this limit. In fact, um, all the other steps are just basic algebra here. So um, just one comment for this problem here, that's why I'm showing this problem, is really because after you apply L'Hopital's rule, you may end up getting a messy expression. And in that case, don't try to, don't try to apply L'Hopital's rule immediately um, at this step. You should really just do what we should really just simplify the expression. And sometimes you only need to apply L'Hopital's rule once. Or well, sometimes you can do it twice in this case, but I chose to just use algebraic manipulation to continue with the, uh, simplifying. And after I get it to a form where it's not in determinate form anymore, then I can draw my conclusion for this on the problem. Okay, so thank you for watching this videos. And if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. I will continue to make more uh, videos on calculus and different topics in mathematics. And yeah, so thank you for your support. See you next time.